Every morning, over 200,000 men and women in BC wake up before the sun. They drink their coffee and make their lunches and spend moments with their loved ones before walking, busing, or driving to work. These are carpenters and joiners and plumbers and electricians. They are sheet metal workers and heavy equipment operators. Construction and skilled trade workers build our city. They are the heroes of growth and prosperity for our economy. They are people who love what they do and are proud of their work. They sacrifice family time for overtime and put their lives on the line every day that they're on site. Their work has meaning, blue collar work that requires passion, common sense, and patience. These are the construction workers of my province, and I want to talk to them. I'm Mike Olton, your host of the Working World of Construction podcast. You know, it's going to be my job every single week to get people out of their hard hats and into the hot seat to talk about all issues pertaining to the construction sector, whether it's skilled trade workers, contractors, safety professionals, even upper management. I'm going to ask the questions and get to the bottom of issues to hopefully find solutions to all the problems right here at the WWC podcast. All right, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Olson. I'm your host of the WWC podcast. Today, we're filming uh, from an amazing place called the Fountainhead Network here in Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. And my guest today on the podcast is Harvey Fishman. Harvey Fishman. You know what? I'm going to let Harvey tell you about himself. Harvey, tell everybody what you do. Hi. Um, I'm a what what they call a technical placement agency aka aka mountain crest person mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh what i do is i supply technical personnel for engineering manufacturing trades construction and management positions mm. in the lower mainland and western canada nice how long have you been doing that i've been doing this for uh um, over 25 years now it's good chunk. uh started off originally as a um, recruiter for uh contract work mm -hmm. which is very difficult to find good quality people mm -hmm. uh did that for about 18 years uh got fed up with it because i felt like i was working as a pimp <laughs> i was selling bodies you know it's funny but uh, that's, funny. that's the way it was mm -hmm. and a lot of these people were very uh they had no ethics mm -hmm. you know what was Except, a different time back then it, no it's still the same you know mm -hmm. like if um somebody comes to them and they offer them five dollars an hour more mm -hmm. they will be working for a company getting paid very good money but they'll jump mm -hmm. and leave you stranded and leave you in a situation where you're so, uh, you're supplying somebody for a contract yeah. and the contract becomes dead yeah right and it's very difficult to be able to replace people it's very hard today to be able to find anybody with um uh let's say uh, five years plus mm. of current working experience in a particular trade or engineering discipline uh, or manufacturing position it's hard to find management people because yeah. the whole area has been saturated uh, most of the good people that are, are working mm -hmm. are currently employed and they don't want to make any moves well like the phone call you just had like the phone call i just had. while we were wait while we were sitting here uh harvey actually got a phone call uh trying to place a job and this guy was in a position already that he he was working he for, was another, working for company. another company and he even said if the deal could be better he might move otherwise he's fine where he is so yes. this is becoming and I mean, he sounded like he was an older guy. He wasn't a young, you know, well, twenty-year-old guy. He is an older guy because mm -hmm. I'm looking for somebody uh, senior management, mm -hmm. a senior mechanical engineer. Yeah, 
you know, specializing in material handling and yeah. uh, heavy industrial equipment uh, yeah. manufacturing and stuff like that. And it's very difficult to find people because the older generation today do not have anybody to replace them. Okay, so what is the difference between the older generation of workers and today's generation of workers? Because you hire people of all ages from all, all types. Like, what are you finding is the big difference? The big difference is the younger generation today don't want to get their hands dirty mm. and they don't have any ethics, not like the older generation. So you, work, older ethics, gener work ethics, work ethics. Work ethics. Mm -hmm. The older generation always worked hard. Mm-hmm. And that's why the younger ge generation is living the way they're living today mm. because of what their parents did. Well, is it maybe, though, because, you know, when you go into a job site, there's maybe twice as many people as, as there used to be? Or or do you find that there's less people on the site? Like, are, are, the, are the guys not working as hard because there are more people on site working? No. Uh, so the they pro don't have the to? problem is that there aren't enough people working mm -hmm. to be able to do what's necessary uh, for say construction companies, mm -hmm. like what you're do working in mm -hmm. the area we're talking about mm -hmm. the trades. Uh, I believe that, um, every single person that ha has certification in the specialized area should have an apprentice working with them, uh, to be able to replace that person when they mm -hmm. retire mm -hmm. this older generation has gotten to a point where most of the seniors are retiring mm. and there's nobody to replace them. Yeah, it's uh, something like uh, over half anyways of the uh, of the skilled trade workers and people in, in construction, etc., are, are starting to consider retirement. So what are companies as a uh, Harvey's a headhunter. So, you okay. know, we, we uh, don't, uh, is that wrong or am I, am I right by saying I, that? I, I don't like the word headhunter, yeah. but I do do that for companies that ask me to approach Other, somebody yeah. working in another company. Cause that's a skill in itself. It's unethical for them yeah. to approach that person themselves. Yeah. You know, are, are uh, guys like you and your position are those guys done like you know when i say that like there's a there is a level of ethics when it comes to hiring and, uh, and obviously bringing well, in other people so yes so, so do they look at you as like you know you're the guys going in to do the dirty work like the the wolf in pulp fiction <laughs> basically I, like I, it sounds it right it sounds like though that this is the hiring process that has become necessary now for companies like what are companies asking you to do okay look uh like i mentioned i worked in the contract industry supplying people yeah but since the company closed i ended up buying it mm -hmm. and i have only been doing full-time placement mm -hmm. full-time placement is an area where there are people that have the experience you're looking for mm -hmm. and they have the uh, the amount of uh, years required in the industry working for one specific company mm -hmm. showing that they're not going to be jumping around mm -hmm. which is happening with the younger generation today yeah the attention you, know, span you, you look at you look at resumes coming from younger people they're six months here one year here six months in their place they don't know what they want yet yeah the people i'm looking for are people that have been working in companies or the same company for a minimum of four or five years plus mm -hmm. those are the people i want mm. because i know that they know they will get a better paying position if they come and work through me. Is this hard to find right now? Like, Very difficult. So what is the quality of laborers that you're finding right now? Like what's happening when you, when you hire a guy, you know, how long is you know, I might drugs? get, I might get a hundred resumes mm -hmm. a day Yeah, and I might talk to three or four. Wow. It's really low. Okay. Because most of the people that apply to me don't, know how to write a resume properly mm -hmm. or they send me just a generic resume yeah. which doesn't highlight their skills mm -hmm. but you help them with the resume this is what i do for anybody that wants to talk to me yeah okay 
if they're coming from a company and they've been working for the company for long term, say four years, five mm -hmm. years plus, mm -hmm. the same company, yeah, they specialize in a particular area and it's an area that I'm looking for, yeah, I will talk with them. I will only work with them if I believe that they have the experience. Mm. Because in, I've been doing this now almost 30 years. Yeah. And questions that I ask, I can spot somebody telling me something that's not true. Right, mm. right from the start. And I will not waste my time. Interesting. Okay? So do you, but so, so when people are looking for jobs, obviously, you know, the old way I remember sending in resumes myself, you would lie a lot and, f and you know, you'd pump up your resume to make yourself look well, better. Well, this is, this is what I do. I help them pump up their resume. Yeah. But it's the truth. Yeah. What I help them do is rewrite their resume as a technical resume, mm. specifically towards that job position, mm. which highlights all the skills required uh by this job description uh i try to get people with a minimum of 70 percent or more mm. of what the company's actually looking for yeah because yeah. when i send the resume i'm basically a gatekeeper for that company mm. i'm working privately for them yeah right and most of the companies that i submit a resume to if it's coming from me they'll interview the person Interesting. All right, we're talking with Harvey Fishman. He's a job placement specialist. You've been doing this for a lot of years. Technical. Technical. Technical, Technical job placement, placement specialist. So what kind of talent is getting hired now? So what are what are the big jobs in the big industries that are really coming in looking for your services? Well, I deal, like I said, I deal in engineering, mm -hmm. manufacturing, uh, trades, uh, construction, mm -hmm. uh, management, uh, heavy management positions high up uh, in companies, very technical areas mm -hmm. that the people have to have the experience. If they don't have the experience, they can't do the work. How many of, how, what percentage of the applicants that you get are female? I would say um, maybe about 25% come to me a uh, they're female, mm -hmm. but a lot of them don't have the experience required to, for more senior positions. So management positions. Because they haven't been given the chance to be able to do this type of work. Interesting. So they, so in their previous job experiences, like in their previous jobs, they haven't really moved up the ladder or no. do you find like they don't stay in the jobs very long? Or is it because... No, no, no. It's not that they don't stay because a lot of them will stay in the same company for long term. Yeah. It's the company that's not letting them build their experience to be, be able to replace a senior that's going to be disappearing. Why do you think that or is? Or retiring. I mean, you know... Why do they do that? I have no Well, idea. I mean, you've been in the industry for decades. Well, like, like I said, why? you know, I've talked to you about this here situation years ago. Mm -hmm. I've been saying for the last 20 years because I came from a technical school. Yeah. I came from a French technical school where all my courses were in French and I was English and I was yeah. the only English guy in the school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and the thing was um, that it's, what am I trying to say here? Well, I mean, you know, it's there seems to be a real disconnect here with females in the in the trade industry, in the technical industry. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason why they're not getting into management jobs. They, they, they're, they're, you know, it's obviously they're not being given a chance. It's the old you know, boys the, club, you know, like type thing. Like, like I said, anybody that's uh, certified, a tradesperson, an engineer, a designer. Uh, Anybody with any technical skills should have an apprentice working with them right now because these other people, the senior people today are going to be retiring and there won't be anybody to replace okay, them. Okay, so that's a good thing to actually go into because it seems to me that this could be something that's missing from companies. I, how many companies that you do placement for actually have in-house apprenticeship programs that take on people and 
and train them from within to put them in in these I can't, diminishing I can't, job I spots. I can't answer you that. Do, do you ever ask them? Like, do you ever? I will not ask them that. But that's not up to me. Yeah. It's up to them. You know, they mm -hmm. should be bringing the, in these people and give them a, a wage that's above minimum wage, mm -hmm. so that they should be sticking with the company to learn what they're being taught by the person that's over them. Mm. who will be teaching them the trade and yeah. how to do things. Uh, but it seems you work with a lot of companies, so it seems like a lot of companies don't adapt this kind of Yeah, kind of thinking. And, and that's the problem. Even in the construction industry, what you work in, mm -hmm. right? Anybody that's, uh, that's in a management position should have a junior working with them mm. so that this person can understand what the hell's going on when you you say, "Oh, you got to do it this way," yeah. there's always a reason, hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this you learn by experience. And if you can't learn it by experience, you're going to learn it in the field. But you, yeah, it's you know, very difficult. Yeah, and you know, because I've I've always thought this. You know, most of these kids or younger people who go to school to learn these apprenticeship uh, trades. Like they go, they go and take these school programs. They don't stick with it because school's so damn hard there's a lot of studying there's a lot of grade expectations you have to you have to achieve a certain level of success in these things so they drop out and, and then and then you got to work say it was a trade you got to yeah. work for four years to get your red seal yeah to get your ticket to get your ticket mm -hmm. or your certification mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't want to work that long to get it Mm. This is a it's faster tough. way for people to end up getting their tickets if they're working with a tradesperson right from the very start as an apprentice, mm -hmm. right? Because they're it's on the job training. Yeah, uh, and it'll get to a point where that senior person will say, "Now you've been with me so long, you've seen the way I do it. This is the next job. You're going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch to make sure you're doing it the right way." Mm. How many times will somebody do something right or wrong? Yeah. But you've got the guy right there ready to tell them, no, you're mm -hmm. doing it wrong. Yeah. Understand the reason why. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm talking with uh, Harvey Fishman from Mountain Crest Personnel uh, here in uh, beautiful Coquitlam, British Columbia, one of the best places to live in BC. Uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. We're Are in you in Burnaby? No, you're in Port Coquitlam. I, my office is in Coquitlam. Yeah, it's in Coquitlam. Yeah, we're in Co poor Coquitlam right now. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, so in the construction sector, how many companies are using your services, uh, hiring guys, and how many of those companies retain the services of those guys? Are you finding that there is a big, um, is there a retention problem when it comes to workers like are, are these companies calling you and say hey this guy we hired he's he lasted a couple months we need another guy is that happening often no it's not happening at all it's not happening at all no these construction companies are not doing anything like that looking for people they're not calling uh, you. they should be talking to people like me for me to find so people. you're not getting calls you from know, construction uh, companies no i'm not uh, i'm not uh I, can you i place? have i have a bunch of construction companies i work with yeah. Uh, they keep calling and asking for certain types of people, yeah. but it's these people aren't available. You know, uh, the trades, uh, the trades have been uh, basically uh, filled with the people that are, are available, and the junior people don't want to even get their hands dirty to even learn. Interesting. And and that's a problem. That's a major problem. And but you have a great network. But uh, no, but I mean, eventually we're going to have to bring in people from overseas so, to replace this, these tradespeople. Okay, so this is also something you don't deal with anybody other than Canadians. You no, you only I, hire Canadians. I I will not uh, work with any people that are are not a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. And why? Or some, uh, they have to be. Right? They have to. Is that just because of hiring practices? No, because or the is problem it? is that I supply people for full time work. Mm -hmm. Okay? I have hired in the past people that on a visa. Okay. That have been here on a visa. Yeah. Right? They had a two year visa 
and the company hires me to hire this person. I was not confident in hiring the person in the first place, yeah. but I ended up doing it, and they ended up keeping the person for the two years. Then that person went to apply for their Canadian citizenship, mm -hmm. and the government they are denied. Canada said, no, you have to leave. Interesting. Now, this company has paid me yeah. a finder's fee yeah. to find this person. Now they're angry at me because this person's leaving because of the government of Canada, which I have no control. Yeah. So this is one of the reasons why I sounds stressful. stay away from you know people who work visas. Yeah, that sounds stressful. It's very stressful. So, but it looks like the forecast for construction, skilled trade, technical positions seems like going out of the country is going to be bigger than it ever has been. Hiring foreign it, workers it, seems. I would say probably in the next five, ten years. So how do we get around that? Like, I mean, start workers bringing are, in these apprentices for all these people right now. So what? Start a, uh, start you attacking know, kids at a younger you know, like, age, uh, getting them in. It's unbelievable uh, what what's happening out there. Hmm. You know, hmm. can we cut for a second? No, no, just just so whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you know, it's it's a fair question because. This is where construction is going. Construction, we're hiring outside of our country at a phenomenal rate. It's becoming more. I mean, I had a friend from Mexico who is like, there's a lineup of people trying to get into Canada because they know there's so many jobs here. And eventually these companies are going to have to say, you know what, maybe we, we stop looking at our own kids who don't want to work or, or, you know, can't work for whatever reasons, and we have to start giving away a lot of our jobs. Like, is this a dangerous practice for, for companies? Well, it, like, I don't know. Like, it's it, a dangerous practice because, first of all, there's a language barrier. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day I get resumes from all over the world. Yeah. I cannot talk to anybody that's not living in Canada or who's not, you know, a permanent resident or Canadian mm -hmm. citizen. Yeah. I will not talk to them. Yeah, because I'm wasting my time as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to be able to even check their references because I'm not going to start calling overseas. I don't speak the language. Yeah, well, no, but you don't. You don't have to. But I mean, you know, there we're an equal opportunity country, and you know, just like no. women and just like you know, other nationalities from other countries, there's an equal chance for everybody to have a job. You agree, right? Like this I, is we're an equal. Opportunity. I, I agree, providing they have the experience, experience. and mm -hmm. re requirements needed for any of the positions I advertise. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I advertise all my jobs in bcjobs.ca mm -hmm. under Mountain Crest. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got about 130 something positions. I'm looking for quality people, and it's very difficult to find people. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe the practice now. And in the future for companies will be, well, if I do take in this worker and I give the opportunity to a foreign worker, I'm only might have only have them for three months, but I'm going to get quality three months Com out of them. No, maybe uh, they uh, have to adjust the their companies will not deal with me if, if it's only for three months. They're looking for full time places. Yeah. You know, it's just a waste of money for them. Yeah. Well, it's feel just like me hiring the person on contract. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'll put a markup on their hourly rate. If I hire them for twenty five bucks an hour, I'll charge thirty five dollars an hour. Yeah. I'll make ten dollars for every hour they work. Yeah. But I you know, it's and then I gotta bankroll them. Mm. I gotta pay their salary every month. Yeah. Or every two weeks. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I have to have the cash. Mm in my account to be able to cover theirs. Wow, sounds like a sounds like so a lot. It's not worth it. Sounds like a it's uh, not worth it, you, you know. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, uh, we're going to wrap this up. I really appreciate you talking about this because this is really interesting, you know, a job placement and placing people uh, in position in in technical or skill trade positions is harder than it's ever been. Uh, you want to close up with anything? anything yeah, I just want to say that if anybody wants to call me, mm -hmm. uh, Please give me a call, 604-377-9055, and let's talk. Yeah. I might be able to help you get a much better paying position. Yeah. All right. Well, there you and have it. I mean, and also closer to where you live.
which, which is everyone important. likes, which, which means more family time, which more means family more time, less, less traveling stress. time. Yeah. It's awesome. Less uh, gas cost. Yeah, which is another big uh, thing. Another big companies thing are dealing <laughs> with. Uh, those Har- I was talking with Harvey Fishman here on the WWC podcast. You can get a, har- a hold of Harvey, um, bcjobs.ca. You can go in there and see any of the Mountain Crest personnel positions, or look under Mountain Crest, or look under Mountain Crest personnel dot com, uh, and you can talk to Harvey yourself. Harvey, thanks for having this interview with me. Pleasure. Yeah. All right, we will uh, see you on the next episode. See you later. Are you stuck in a job that's not paying for your level of expertise? If you specialize in the fields of engineering, manufacturing, trades, and construction, then we're the company for you. Stop wasting time searching the internet. Mountain Crest Personnel has been placing skilled workers in higher paying positions for the last 20 years. Send your resume now to Harvey at peakpeople.ca. So what are you waiting for? Let Mountain Crest Personnel find your higher paying position now.